This time I want to make a, a project uh, rather than doing any kind of review and in this case I want to do a special project. It's not going to involve lasers, at least not to any great degree. It's going to be one of these river charcuterie boards and uh, they're essentially two pieces of wood, in this case walnut, and an epoxy strip down the center with some pigment in it and swirled around so it looks like waves. It sounds really simple, it is really simple, uh, you need some basic tools, but I'll talk about those in a second, so let's get going. How's it going everyone? Steve here, welcome back to my workshop. And as I mentioned, uh, in this video I'm making river charcuterie boards, and the reason I'm doing it is because it's summer. And that means it's wedding season and also barbecue season, so people are getting married, they want to give gifts. Uh, but thankfully COVID is winding down so people are getting together with their friends for barbecues and things as well and, and just dinners and they're looking for something a little fancier so uh, I've been busy making these things and I've made four or five already in the, in the recent last couple weeks and I have a couple more that I have to make in the next month or so. So uh, I've been busy, uh, which is one of the reasons why I haven't been so productive on videos, but uh, hopefully you can forgive me because, you know, we all have to make a bit of money. Uh, anyway, uh, what I want to do is walk you through this, this process step by step from st starting from, uh, you know, a raw piece of, of edge cut walnut, uh, how to mix up the epoxy and, and color it and pour it and, and buff it, all the usual things that you would have to do. Now, I'm lucky enough, uh, thankfully, to have every power tool known to man, so you'll see tools probably that you won't have. Uh, for example, you probably don't have a thickness planer for the most part, most people don't. Uh, but uh, in places where I do have to, where I do use some of these tools that you may or may not have, I'll talk about alternatives and what you can do. Uh, as well, I, I've kind of built a few jigs to shorten up the, the work process here, and I'll talk about those as well and what you can do instead of those because you may not have a big, a big supply of silicone rubber to make a rubber mold, for example. So with that, let's get going. And uh, by the end of this, you'll see what, what, uh, how I created this board I showed you, and uh, hopefully you can make one of your own. So uh, on we go. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is select a piece of, of wood. In my case here, I'm going to use a piece of walnut. And I, what I'm going to do is just roughly mark it down the center, uh, draw a center line, and this is what we're going to use to, uh, to cut it. And uh, what we're doing is we're going to reverse the, the wood so the, the pieces that are on the edge right now, the outside edge, will become the inside and they will form the, the edges of our river. And the, and the inside where we cut it will be the straight edges on the outside. So uh, let, me, let me cut this and uh, I'll show you what we got. So I cut my board in half and now what I'm going to do is just figure out how I want to lay it out uh, in the form. And the, the way I'm doing that is to make sure that I'm getting kind of the best looking river, really the shore here. Now you also want to make sure the surfaces of the wood are going to look nice. You don't want a whole bunch of, if it's walnut, you don't want a whole bunch of lighter colored wood. You want maybe a stripe of that on the, on the inside by the river and then traditional darker walnut on the outside. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right, with our boards cut and set up ideally, uh, we need to create a couple of square edges, one on each side here. So I'm just gonna run it through my jointer. Now, if you don't have a jointer, you can just use a regular hand plane or uh, even a, an electric plane. But it, what's important is you get the square edges. Now, the next thing to do is to get rid of that bark. Uh, this particular piece of wood had no bark on one side, but we have to scrape this off. And you really want to make sure you get down to the to the core wood here because the bark isn't very strong against the 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 wood part of the tree. So uh, if you pour a, a resin over it, it'll basically come apart. So we want to get all of that off, and it's a bit tedious. I'm just using a hand chisel here. If you have uh, uh, like a spoke shave or something, you could also use that, but it's uh, or a draw knife but for what i'm doing here this will be fine and again you can use a hand chisel or or which is what i choose or even a planer but planers won't get into some of the crevices next we're going to do a bit of sanding just to rough it up so i got like 60 grit sandpaper here and i'm just roughing up the side where the resin will touch and that's to 
make sure there's a rough surface for the epoxy to adhere to, but also uh, gets rid of any of that loose bark that's left because again, we don't want that. So we just sand it all off and we're not really digging into the wood too deep here. So it's not like we're trying to sand it smooth. Uh, we're just getting rid of the roughness. Now we need to calculate the volume of, of the epoxy we need. And this is really a rough guess. Uh, so you can just take an average measurement of width and the height here is one inch. Do some calculation and you'll come up with, a, with an ounce uh, size. In my case, the, the form that I'm using there, you saw the silicone form is uh, with the wood in it is roughly three and a half to four cups of resin. So I usually make four. I don't generally have any left over because there's usually knots and things to fill in. So, uh, so that's what I do there. Uh, next, we'll just mix up the resin and th the resin I'm using here is this magic resin. Uh, it works fairly well. It's a nice slow cure. It takes really 24 hours to get tacky. It's a two to one ratio, so one, uh, two parts of resin and one part hardener. And I like it, it works quite well because of the slow pour, uh, slow cure rather. It, you generally don't get air bubbles in it unless you're you know, really whipping it up. So, uh, it, you know, so it's pretty drama free. So now we'll put the hardener in and again, we're measuring pretty carefully here. And this is a volume measure, not weight measure for this particular resin. A nice slow stir for a few minutes. You'll note I'm wearing rubber gloves here. Uh, resin does bother some people. It doesn't bother me, but I really just don't like resin stuck all over my hands. Uh, now I'm gonna use some black diamond pigment. Uh, this is mica pigment, which is nice because when you stir, stir it in the mold, you get a nice uh, river effect. And we just stir that in and you can see already the, the shininess there. Uh, gently pour it in. Uh, it's not really that critical because the air bubbles will come out of this. Uh, and you can see the kind of effect you're going to get there. It, it looks pretty nice. And you can see I've clamped down the boards on the side. It's just a loose clamping. We're just really trying to keep them from, from floating. Uh, next quick hit with the uh, heat gun to, and that's really just to get off those initial bubbles. Uh, I'll repeat this process again in, in you know, 10 or 15 minutes and then we just let it dry for literally two days before I take it out. So this is actually two days later and uh, we pull off these uh, pieces of wood I put here. Sometimes you might need a hammer. It's a bit tough sometimes they do stick. Uh, I do have them covered in uh, in this red tape. This is just uh, plastic tape. Uh, that helps reduce the sticking there. And then we pull it out of the resin mold that I created for specifically for this purpose. If you're interested in these, by the way, you can just leave a comment and I'll, I'll, I can make them. Uh, they're not, they won't, they're not particularly cheap, but trust me, they save a ton of time. The alternative here, by the way, on the, f on the form is you can take, uh, just some wood, uh, plywood and, and, uh, create an actual box. That's really the shape of that form and screw it all together. You need to tape it really well with that red tape or, or Tyvek tape. And the challenge there is you just, you have to take it apart every time. And then when you put it back together, you have to retape it. And I was just finding when I made these, they, they were taking just, I was wasting an hour just building up and tearing down that box. So I just made one of these resin or one of these silicone forms and it has saved me so much time. Uh, anyway, the, we'll pull the board out there. You can see it uh, in its rough state. It needs to be planed of course. And uh, that's what we'll do now. We'll plane it to the right thickness. And I generally go pretty gently on the planer. I, you could easily hog off a whole, a whole bunch here at a time, but I don't really wanna take the risk of chipping the resin or, or doing anything uh, to the wood. So I just I plane it. Sometimes I'll turn it end to end if the grain is the right way, you have to be careful. But it, you get it down to the right thickness and getting rid of all the roughness. Uh, next thing to do is to cut it to width. So what I'm gonna do is just cut one side 
really just the minimal amount because we don't want to waste any any of the width and you can see I'm being fairly careful there cutting it through and then once we get that done I'll flip it around and cut the other side and again you know safety goggles all the usual things and uh, one more pass through the through the jointer here to uh, get those edges nice and smooth I run it through a couple of times again I'm being fairly gentle here I think I'm taking like a 32nd of an inch off each time each pass and uh, there you go there's kind of the rough ingot of of our board this is a good time, by the way, because we haven't really sanded anything. It's a good time to look at any of these blemishes in the board, so knots. And all I'm doing here is using a medium CA and then some accelerator to, to make, it, make it hard right away. And that'll seal up those holes uh, as, we, as we sand. Uh, now we need to cut. I, I normally just cut a bevel, a 45 degree bevel into each end. Uh, just to create some handholds and then I'll use a, a eighth inch round over. So what I'm doing here that you can't see behind my fat shoulder is, uh, is I'm cutting that 45 degree bevel. You can see it there. Uh, if you're using a uh, particularly hard wood, you can do it in two passes. Uh, this wood is actually not too bad. And uh, so that's what the end will look like roughly. And then I'll do the other end. Next, I'll do finish off the roundovers here. You can see I already started. Uh, again, this is an eighth inch roundover bit and I just go around all the sides, top and bottom. I generally stay away from the bevel, of course. Uh, that one, I'll just, if, if I wanna put a bit of a roundover on it, I'll just use my sander as I'm sanding. So sanding, I start with 120, 220, 320, and then on the epoxy, I'll actually go up uh, progressively to uh, usually two or three thousand and then I'll buff it with buffing compound uh, to get them smooth really shiny it depends from one customer to the next whether they whether they want it more kind of natural or whether they want it to look like glass uh, I kind of like the glass look but uh, anyway with the sanding done now we're just I'm just kind of giving it a bit of a bath here in mineral oil and I'll spread this around and you can see I'm just using a glove. You could use a paintbrush. You could do it with your bare hand if you want. And then I'll, I'll do both sides and all, and all the edges and I'll let it sit there for, you know, an hour, sometimes overnight if I'm busy doing something else. And, uh, and we're pretty much finished here. Like it's, it's generally a simple project. The last thing I'll generally do is, uh, is put some board butter on these. I make my own, and again, if you're interested, uh, let me know and I can make it available. It's generally pretty cheap uh, to, to either make yourself or even to buy. Uh, I tend to use uh, mineral oil and, and sometimes lemon oil as well. I usually use lemon oil because it, it smells nice for one thing, but it, it does help kind of keep the wood uh, a, little, a little more protected and then beeswax mixed in. So. So there we go, there's, there's the, uh, the process of making one of these boards. And you can see it really wasn't that hard. Anyone can make one of these. Now, again, you do need some basic tools, certainly a sander. You don't wanna be sanding by hand. There's not a lot of planing here. So if you really do need to plane by hand, you can, but uh, you could easily also just use really coarse grit sandpaper to get rid of some of the initial uh, over overspill of the resin and get it down to, to raw wood and then sand it from there. All right, with the board finished here, we'll do a quick uh, flyover. Uh, you can see the the finish turned out great. Uh, just and this is really just board butter uh, or mineral oil. Uh, the resin came out nice and shiny. Uh, as I said, I normally go up to three thousand and then buffing compound. But the river effect here is is uh, kind of what I was looking for. Now, if you're doing these, these boards and you're looking to try and make this nice river effect, uh, don't stir this epoxy right away. Casting resin takes, you know, 24 hours to get tacky. So you have lots of time. So normally what I'll do is I'll do a pour and uh, I'll come back starting 12, maybe 13 hours later and I'll, I'll do the stir then. And then I'll come back every 15 minutes or so. And, uh, and if it's not the way I like it, I'll stir it some more until 
uh, it gets honestly too tacky to stir. Now you do have to be careful if it is too tacky. You can actually stir bubbles into it and uh, they just won't come out. So you gotta be very careful. Uh, don't wait too long, but uh, don't, don't do it right away. So timing is everything here. So the thumbnail on this video promised profit from these. Uh, so what do, what do I make? Uh, now I'm in Canadian dollars, so you'll have to convert this to your local currency if otherwise. Uh, as far as uh, walnut goes, uh, these are usually, because they're, they're live edge, they tend to be cheaper. So there's, there's maybe $10 worth of, of walnut here and another 15 or $20 worth of epoxy, depending on how big the, how wide the epoxy uh, slot is. And when I sell these uh, after about an hour and a half of, of actual manual labor in my shop, uh, I'll sell these for anywhere from 140 100 to 160 dollars. Uh, depends on the size of the board, of course, but I normally make this as a standard size. This board is 18 by about 10 and a half. So, uh, so you can make some pretty decent profit off of these. So there you go. We'll say with relative ease, you can make yourself a really nice charcuterie board, either uh, you know for your own kitchen or maybe you're giving it away as a wedding gift or, or a patio gift for somebody. Uh, now, the reason I like making these is because I spend so much time on rigorous design. And this is one of these times when I'm completely at the mercy of, of nature. Uh, start from a live edge piece of wood and mix in some epoxy with with some amount of color pigment in it stir it up and in the end you get what you get and it's never what you expected but it's always better than you hope for so uh, hopefully you're willing to uh, watch the video here and give it a try uh, i'll put a link to the um, to the epoxy I use in the description down below. That's an affiliate link. So if you use it, you're helping out the channel. Uh, I use this epoxy for everything in part because it's got a, a good long cure time. It's actually a couple of days. And that means it's easy to work with. You have lots of working time and you rarely get bubbles in it. Uh, you really don't have to try too hard to make something that's crystal clear. Uh, with that, uh, we can wind the video down here. So hopefully you uh, wanna put one of these together. Uh, I still have a couple more to make, so I'm, I'm got to get busy. Uh, as always, I'll put a video up in the corner here for you to watch. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one uh, and you get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.